Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin where we left off in the previous episode with this wayward hide Earth return vessel. We're currently in orbit around Phobos, around Mars, and we are near the Phobos station. I was trying to get to dock with the station, but then found out that it had an Air RCS thruster imbalance, so I used one of the supply vessels on the station to try to tug it in, but the center mass was too far back, so right there I was moving the resources from the hide into the supply vessel so that we could move the center mass as much as possible so that the RCS would be better balanced. However, in the end I still needed to use the station's RCS and maneuver the station to dock with the incoming vessel, which was not ideal, but the station does have a lot of RCS thrusters, so that ended up being a little bit more balanced. And here we are coming into dock. I don't know what the issue was with the hide. Obviously it should have had a balanced RCS system, but the aft RCS must have just been misconfigured, so they weren't firing. So I transferred uh, resources back, and then we turned to Copper Spikes, who is approaching Ceres. And so we have to do a fairly substantial Ceres capture burn with ion engines. So we have to start early on, and here the ion engines are firing during time warp there. And we have to make multiple corrections to try and hit Ceres. And finally we are entering Ceres SOI here. And there it is. Here I've turned on the candle engines, which are little RTGs that Hydrazine passes through in order to produce thrust. They're fairly efficient. And, well, they're higher thrust than the ion engines, but they don't provide that much delta V, so uh, they have to be used advisedly, and I decided to use it just close to periapsis here around Ceres in order to do the final bit of capture. So that is what they are doing, guzzling the hydrazine fairly quickly, but we do get our capture, and so Copper Spikes is safe around Ceres. Uh, next up, we have a Ceres supply vessel. We had two of those coming into Ceres. Uh, this one, unfortunately, I started the ion engine burn late. I'm not too sure why I didn't turn on the the hydrazine-fueled candle engines, but uh, perhaps we just didn't have enough delta-v with that, given the speed that we were at, so I decided to reserve them. Uh, so yeah, just a late ion engine burn caused us to overshoot series, and we need to make corrections to get back. And here we do have the candle engines helping us to try and kill our velocity with respect to Ceres. I basically tried to rendezvous with it as if it was a vessel. And so, not ideal, but anyway, once we had done enough with the candle engines to slow down, I switched back to the ion engines and did some more. But we barely have enough delta V here. You can see I'm getting our relative velocity to Ceres down to zero. And then eventually we'll start moving towards it again. We're currently uh, uh, more than 100,000 kilometers away. But the closest approach distance right at the top of the screen starts going down. And so we're moving towards it. And the supply vessel will be able to make orbit around Ceres, but it's not ideal. We have about 561 meters per second to work with as far as capturing and then getting to the vessel with copper spikes on it. Fortunately, we do have a backup supply vessel anyway, so we then turn to that. And of course, I do its burn at a more appropriate time and use the candle engines a little bit earlier. Here, the candle engines are on. I think they provide about four kilonewtons each, so they're not like wonderful here. But again, better than ion engines. And there's Ceres, and we, of course, end up capturing. So passing by at Paris series? Uh, whatever you call periapsis around series, I don't know. I don't know what the official designation for that is, but here we are, and really not that much leeway on the Delta V here, but it has captured. And then we turn back to the first one to get it to capture. It wasn't too far off anyway, it was in a very series like situation after killing all the relative velocity, so it just needs a little bit of a push. And then we are in orbit, and the issue is getting them all together. Ultimately, I decided that Copper Spikes should probably just go back to Earth instead of hanging out here for too long, and I don't have his vessel rendezvous with these around Ceres at all. 
if Copper Spikes was to try to hang out until the next opportunity to return home, uh, he would have needed those. So we turn to Mikko around Uranus after all the series business, and here is Mikko finally doing a correction inside Uranus SOI after a very long trip, and will eventually capture around Uranus. We see that we have limited supplies, considering the time it takes to get to Periapsis once you enter Uranus SOI is still 110-ish days. And then, of course, the orbital periods around Uranus are really long too, depending on what orbit you're in. Here is the supply vessel that Miko is going to have to rendezvous with in order to get supplies so that he can survive, and we get that into orbit around Uranus. Uh, it was launched later, but arrived first. So it has plenty of Delta V. Ultimately, we want to rendezvous them together in orbit around Miranda, the inner moon of Uranus. That was what Mikko requested. Of course, the inner moons are the toughest to get to. Speaking of moons, we next turn to the Lunar Gateway, or my weird assembly of the Lunar Gateway. And we decide to remove the Grusha spacecraft, the pair, because it had run out of hy hydrogen anyway, so it doesn't have any fuel except for its RCS system. And I decided that it'd be best to just deorbit it instead of trying to send a refueler. And we just launch a new pair with the fuel in. Preferably with more MLI layers. I think this, this just didn't have enough. And so I launch a version with full MLI layers here, and that's what you see. And I launch it on the Unix rocket, which is a Raptor 9 rocket. Basically, what happens if you use Raptors instead of a Falcon 9 configuration with Merlins? And we do have the little fins at the bottom which serve as landing legs, but we don't have grid fins because I wasn't intending to reuse this. So, yeah. We are launching out of Cape Canaveral. Now this is OP as far as launching the pair is concerned. The pair was meant to launch on the Proton rocket. And this has much more capacity than that, so it will be able to handle most of the transfer burn to the moon. Uh, the pair is meant to actually do the full transfer, capture, and return all on its own with its nuclear engine. The pair's Piece of the Resistance is the nuclear engine, the RD0410, and that's why it needs hydrogen but doesn't need any oxidizer. There's a transfer burn using the Raptor vacuum engine on the upper stage of the Unix rocket. And actually it does the entire transfer burn, so it was able to do that. And we separate off after getting into Lunar SOI to make use of it fully. Uh, also its RCS system is handy. And I did have little radiators also on the pair this time, hoping that that would help with the boil off as well, as it remains docked to Lunar Gateway for an extended period of time, and so the boil off hopefully will not be too severe. Anyway, we rendezvoused with Lunar Gateway with plenty of fuel to spare all around. And here it is coming in. So for those unfamiliar with the pair, it is basically just a crew capsule, a spherical crew capsule attached to a much larger sphere containing the hydrogen for the nuclear engine on the tail. Alright, so it is all docked, and we turn back to Copper Spikes, and I decide to bring Copper Spikes home because there is a series to Earth window pretty quickly. The next series to Earth window you can see on the list in Kerbal Alarm Clock, it's... Uh, Less than two years away, but it's still a while. So, yeah. Copper Spikes was not present to uh, answer my question about whether he wanted to come home immediately or hang around series. I decided it'd be best to have him come home because there wasn't too much to do around series right now. And maybe then be able to go on a different trip since this one had basically been fulfilled. Okay, so this is Mikko around Uranus now capturing. There was a correction burn earlier to get uh, his vessel more in line with Miranda. And there's of course an ion engine capture. So we are doing it during time warp. You can see the throttle is up to full. And we've got dramatic music because this is actually the most ambitious capture we've done so far. It took like 20 years to get Mikko over here. So it's been a long trip. Heck, it's been a couple of years real time, so yeah. It's been quite an ordeal for Mikko to wait for this moment as we finally capture around Uranus. And I was wrong, it wasn't getting in line with Miranda per se, it was 
uh, the correction was to make sure that the descending node was at periapsis so that it would eventually make it easier to dis do this correction burn to correct our inclination with Miranda, tilt our orbit so that we were in line with Miranda's orbit. And that's what we have there and many more burns will have to be done to bring that vessel down and this one. This is the supply vessel that Miko will have to meet up with around Miranda and so it needs to boost up its orbit to Miranda's orbit and correct inclination and we of course don't want to fly by too many times before actually hitting Miranda but with the ion engines it takes a few passes in order to actually bring the orbit down. I check our supply situation and 236 days of oxygen seems like plenty until you realize that the orbital period is 57 days. So yeah, it's it's not too tight, it's just tight enough that we have to pay attention and not dawdle about it. After many corrections with the vessels around Uranus, we actually get to a Mars transfer window. And so I take a look at the Phobos station and see what I need to send over. And of course the hide uh, does not have any hydrogen left. Uh, I'd say of course, but that seems to be another boil-off issue thing. And so I decided to send some primarily hydrogen, that's why it's Mars Refueler H, but I think we've got xenon gas and all on there too. And I decided to use a Kasei Super Heavy, not just heavy with two boosters, Super Heavy with four boosters. And so this was quite loud. There's no cross-feeding here, so we have to throw down the core, and I actually probably did that a little bit late. Lots of power. And there we are breaking the sound barrier, and the G-force is going up. I don't think I had throttled down the core even at this point, so we only got a little bit extra time here. I've got the engine group's controller out so I can throttle down the core. At least I had assigned that. And then once they separate, I throw all it back up. All right. And here the core runs out. And we have the upper stage, which is another one of the ED9 engines, just a vacuum engine, vacuum variant of the first stage engines. And we make orbit with plenty to spare to transfer over to Mars. Partly this was a test of how much this configuration in the Kasei Super Heavy could send to Mars. And as we run out of the upper stage, well, as we complete the burn, we will see that we have basically 140 tons, close to 140 tons. And we had some spare left in the system. Next up I decided to use the Kasei Super Heavy to launch a Fubar and Oxygen vessel, this time just with hydrogen, just with a nuclear thermal rocket engine instead of the mix of nuclear thermal plus ion engine that I usually use. And so we need a larger container of hydrogen in order to make sure that we could capture properly. Actually this payload is lighter than the previous one, it was uh, 130 tons I believe. And of course, we aren't delivering the fuel, we're just using that for capture, though of course if we end up with some extra, that would be nice. If we can deliver some of that hydrogen, that would be ideal. Again, I took a bit of time to throttle down the core. In fact, we probably didn't even need to light the core on the ground. Uh, so we didn't end up with too much extra time with the core. And here, the, uh, the ED9 vacuum engine completes orbit. And with plenty to spare for a transfer, we knew that because this is actually a lesser payload than the previous one, so no problems. Uh, well, one problem, we actually ended up in a lopsided orbit. You can see the periapsis is starting in the atmosphere there, but because of where our burn needed to be done, it ended up alright. So I overburned a little bit there, and fixing it up with a mid-course adjustment, we do get our Mars transfer as we want. And back to Miko, since we have now wrapped up some of the things I wanted to do at the Mars transfer window. I have a new Mars transfer window there just in case, but I will not be using that in the course of this video anyway. So we are making sure that Miko captures around Miranda. And I discover at this point that Miranda has a really, really small SOI, which is annoying. So we easily slip out of the SOI while we are trying to capture and trying to get back in without crashing into Miranda is a pain. So yeah, 
basically we are once again rendezvousing with a vessel. The SOI is something like less than, it's about 240 kilometers, so it's really tight. And it's really hard to get into it without accidentally crashing in, into Miranda, but here we are capturing with the supply vessel as well. And of course making additional burns to rendezvous to the two together. In this case, we don't have any option. Miko does need the supplies immediately. And so here the supply vessel is capturing and you can see the apoapsis at which it captures, which indicates how small the SOI is. You can see we're in a practically circular orbit as soon as we capture. Matching inclinations in this tight SOI is a pain, especially since our inclinations are very different right now. And of course all the rendezvous burns have to be done very carefully with these ion engines. But yeah, well, eventually we get them together. And so here is the rendezvous. It's a little bit laggy there. And we have fuel to spare as we come into dock. Docking ended up being a little bit difficult. Uh... Yeah, and these are the small docking ports too. So have to be careful. And there we are. So Miko has his supplies at long last. 20 years worth of supplies, enough to get back home of course. And I think there's a backup supply mission just in case. But with Mikko in orbit around Miranda finally after a very long trip and with me trying to check out what kind of return trip we can get and how much Delta V that's going to take, I'm going to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.